Hey everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel. And it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're gonna be covering today's video is we're gonna be looking at structural analysis, and we are gonna be determining some reactions for statically determinate members. And this will be the sixth part in this series. So what we have going on here is this picture shown on the left, and this is a bulkhead AD, is subjected to both water and soil backfill pressures as shown. They're already calculated for us, so that's good. Assuming AD is pinned at the bottom and then determine the horizontal and vertical reactions at A, so that's our first part, and also the required tension force in the ground anchor BC necessary for equilibrium. And we are also told that the bulkhead has a mass of 800 kilograms. So let's draw a quick free body diagram here because this is a little more of a complex picture. So let's go ahead and draw our free body diagram. This will be my bulkhead. This is going to be my uh, pin down here at A. And this will be point B up here. And of course, this will be the top, which is D. Now let's throw on our forces here. So we have our water pressure, which is already calculated for us. If we did not have this calculated for us, we could just use um, the overall uh, pressure or weight of water and then um, multiply by our overall distances here. And then we would have to know how far um, the bulkhead goes in and out of the page as well. But that's already calculated for us. We don't need to know that because we already have a force of 118 kilonewtons per meter for our water pressure here. And this is four meters tall. And then we are also shown that we have a ground soil pressure here, which is pushing back in the opposite direction. So it is going to the left and that spans the entire distance there. And once again, don't have to worry about determining that pressure force because well, it's already given to us as 310 kilonewtons per meter. And we are told some distances here that from B to D is 0 0.5 meters and then all the way down from B to A is going to be six meters. And then we're also shown that B has an anchor point all the way to C, but we're just going to show that right here is that tension force of the anchor. And we're just gonna call that tension force BC. And then we have our reactions down here at point A. I'm going to assume A Y is up. And I'm just going to assume that A sub X is also in the same direction as that tension anchor, assuming that the soil pressure is overpowering the water pressure. And lastly, we cannot forget that we are told that we have a mass of 800 kilograms, which we're gonna have to turn that into a weight. And that will be acting downward, roughly at the centroid, well, not roughly, but at the centroid of the bulkhead, which I'm gonna place roughly right in there. It does not really matter where you place it vertically, as you will see. So first thing we need to do to finish off the free body diagram is get our weight of our bulkhead, which will just be our mass of 800 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration of gravity of 9.81 meters per second squared. And that gives us 7,848 newtons, which I'm just gonna turn that into kilonewtons dividing by a thousand. So we end up with 7.848 kilonewtons, which would be this weight right here. All right, now my free body diagram is complete. And all we need to find is our tension in BC, A sub Y and A sub X for our reactions at the base. So let's go ahead and let's just do the easy summation here first, because this is a statically determinate member, meaning we only have three reactions to determine here. We can use our equilibrium equations of summing forces in the Y, summing forces the X, and then summing moments about a point. We don't have to use any kind of special calculations here or theorems. So let's go ahead and get our first reaction, which is the easiest. Well, since we have two in the X direction, can't go to the X right away. We'll have two unknowns. We could use moment to find one of these, which we are going to, but the easiest one would be our single reaction in the vertical direction in our Y. So let's go ahead and just get that one first. So taking up as positive, summing forces in the Y direction equal to zero, I would have AY, because I assumed it upward, minus off my weight, which is 7.848 kilonewtons of force equal to zero. And well, that's some very difficult math to do there. You end up with A sub Y is equal to 7.848 kilonewtons. 
in the upward direction. And that's one of my reactions already solved. All right, so let's scroll down here a bit. And we just keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum moments in order to get one of my horizontal reactions, my tension, in B, C, or A sub X. Now, I am going to sum moments down at A sub X. Now, it really doesn't matter um, which point you sum at. You just want to sum at one of your reactions points so that it drops out of your moment equation. You could either do it at B or A. I'm just choosing to do it at A. So summing moments at point A all have to be in equilibrium equal to zero. This will give me my tension force. So let's go ahead and just put in the tension force here. So we would have TBC, which is my force, times its distance down to A, perpendicular distance, which is six meters. It will be rotating clockwise about A, so it is minus based upon my positive sign convention of counterclockwise. Same thing, let's do the same uh, for our water force here of 118. Well, it will also be rotating clockwise, so it is minus 118 kilonewtons per meter. Since it is a triangular force, we have to turn it into a point load. And the way we're going to do that is take its magnitude of 118 kilonewtons per meter, multiplied by the distance it runs. Well, it runs for four meters. And since it's a triangle, we have to multiply it by half for the area of half, one half base times height. Anytime you're trying to find an equivalent force for an overall load shape, such as a rectangle, triangle, trapezoid, just find the area of that load. So this would be my equivalent point load, which acts right here, roughly. It'll be closer to the taller end than it is to the shorter end. Well, for my distance here, what is that? Well, for a triangle, it will always be your distance and then it's going to be multiplied by either two thirds or one third of that distance. So it's always going to be one third from the taller end and then two thirds your distance from the shorter end. Because there is more load on the bottom side here, it will drag it, it's centroid, it will drag it centroid closer to that taller end. So it will be four meters times one third to get it to point A. Alrighty, so then let's repeat that same process or that same idea for the soil pressure. The soil pressure will actually be loading and it'll be uh, rotating counterclockwise. So this one will actually be plus my magnitude of 310 kilonewtons per meter times the distance it runs, which is six plus 0.5, so 6.5 meters times a half because it is a triangle for its area. And then we need the distance parameter and it's gonna be the same idea as we did for the water force. So it is going to be somewhere right in through here. So we're going to say that this is one third our total distance from the tall end. And then it's gonna be two thirds its total distance it runs from the shorter end. Once again, because we have more force down here and we're going to zero at the top, the centroid of this triangle, which where the equivalent point load acts, will be dragged closer to the taller end than to the shorter end. So that's why it's one third versus two thirds. So this would just be my total distance it runs, which is 6.5 meters times one third. Alrighty, and then that's all we have for our moment equation there because the A sub X and A sub Y go directly through A, so they do not occur within this moment equation. So let's go ahead and rearrange and we can solve for our tension force uh, uh, TBC. So this would just be equal to the 310, which I just took TBC to the other side. So 310 times 6.5 times one half times 6.5 divided by three minus off 118 times four times a half times four divided by three. And of course you can always simplify this down if you want to. I'm just showing you all the calculation here and then all of that divided by the six, which is a big mistake that a lot of people forget to do. And it's very simple is that they forget to divide by whatever is attached to your variable that you're looking for. So all of that divided by six gives me 311.375 kilonewtons. It came out to be a positive answer. So that means my assumed direction to the right was correct. So that anchor has to be pulling back 311.375 kilonewtons up here 
in order to keep this bulkhead from rotating like that. All right, so the last thing we have to determine is a sub x. Well, we've already used our moment equation, our x equation. Now we could use the moment equation once again, but we're going to, oh, we use the y equation, sorry. Now we could use the moment equation again, just summing moments at b to get a sub x, but we're just going to use the easier one and we're going to use f sub x here, which will only include my water load, soil pressure, TBC, and a sub x. And I did not mention this in the moment equation before, but the weight of the bulkhead does not get included simply because, well, it goes right through point A. So summing forces in the x direction will take to the right as positive. All that has to be equal to zero. So we would have our water of 118 uh, kilonewtons per meter times the distance it runs, which is four meters, and then times a half for the triangle load. And then subtracting off the soil of 310 kilonewtons per meter times 6.5 meters, the distance it runs, and then multiplied by a half because it's a triangle. And then plus my tension anchor, which is 311.375 kilonewtons of force. And then I have a sub x assumed to the right, so it would be plus a sub x equal to zero. And then a sub x is the only unknown there, so you can rearrange and solve for it, and it pops out to be 460.125 kilonewtons of force. It came out to be a positive number, so I know my arrow direction of to the right is the correct one. So, does it make sense that A sub X would be larger than the tension anchor from B to C? Yes, it does, because, well, we have a lot more soil pressure down here than we do up here at B. So the water in this case is actually assisting the bulkhead because the soil pressure is trying to rotate this entire bulkhead while the soil pressure is saying, yeah, we're going to rotate back the other way and force you back the other way. So it's actually assisting in this case. So those are your reactions. A sub Y is 7.848 kilonewtons up. Your tension and your anchor is 311.375 kilonewtons. And A sub X is 460.125 kilonewtons to the right. Now, what we can do is that we can do a check to make sure that we are okay. And since we summed moments at point A to begin with, you can sum moments at your other reaction to make sure everything cancels out. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to erase these portions down here. That way I can actually see my diagram up here because you have to watch out for your distances when you're summing moments using triangles. All right, so let's do our check here and we'll, we'll do it in blue. And we are going to sum moments taking counterclockwise as positive at point B and all that has to cancel be equal to zero for everything to be correct. So this will be checking our reaction A sub X. So once again, A sub Y, the weight and TBC all cancel out because they have a perpendicular distance of zero to point B. So the only thing that's going to be included is our water, soil pressure, and A sub X. So let's start with our water. So we're going to have 118 kilonewtons per meter times the distance it runs, which is four meters, and then times a half. That is my force. Now I need a distance to get it up to point B. Well, once again, this distance from here to point A is one third of four. Well, I need the distance from B down to that point. So what I can do is that I can just take the full distance, which is six meters, and then subtract off the one third of the depth or the one third of four. So I will take my six meters and then subtract off four meters times one third. And that would give me my distance from this equivalent point load all the way up to B. So that's what you have to watch out for these triangles is that you have to make sure that you're using the one third, two thirds correctly, and you are correctly finding that perpendicular distance to your summation point. So this will be rotating counterclockwise about B, so it is positive. Let's do A sub X next. So then plus A sub X, which was 460.125 kilonewtons times its total distance to point B, which is just the six meters, rotating counterclockwise, so it is positive. And then let's do the 310. This one will be rotating um, clockwise about point B because my equivalent point load, when I find its um, 
equivalent point load, it is lying below point B and it is going to the left. So it will be rotating counterclockwise. So this portion up here technically would be rotate or this will be rotating clockwise. This portion above B technically is rotating counterclockwise. So if you wanted to, you could split this up into two portions, this portion up here, and then this trapezoidal portion down below. That's a lot of work. So what you can do is that you can just take your equivalent point load right here, and since it lies below point B, you can just take that rotational force um, clockwise about point B, and then you don't have to worry about this little portion above it because it's included down here. So this will be rotating clockwise, so it is negative 310 kilonewtons per meter times the total distance it runs, which is 6.5 meters, times a half since it is a triangle, and then we need a distance. Well, the same theory here, we know that one third of the depth is to right here. Well, we need this distance to point B then. Well, that would just be the six meters minus that one third of your depth. So this would be six meters minus 6.5 meters for my total um, length of this 310, and then multiply that by one third. And that would be my total distance to point B for that equivalent point load from the soil pressure. Now, we would run through all this, and what does that equal? Well, it should equal zero, and well, it comes out to be exactly zero. So I am very confident that my A sub X is correct, and that my um, TBC is also correct, because that's how I found A sub X. And then A sub Y is just kind of, well, really difficult to check, but it was a very simplistic equation. So that's how you would work that particular problem. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out greatly over here. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.